Recently, Crystal and Kyle, good friends of the stream, and again, you know, a lot of people get mixed up on this. I've said a lot of negative stuff about Crystal Ball. Occasionally, she hits a dub, and when she does, I acknowledge it. I really like Kyle Kalinske. And from what I've heard, they've been cooking. Because they had Brianna Joy Gray on, and if you, if you recall, Brianna Joy Gray is a um, lunatic. <laughs> Let's watch. Every year, because we all vote for blue no matter who, because most Democrats vote blue no matter who, or most left-leaning people do, the message that gets sent out is that Democrats don't have a bar. You can go as low as you want, as close to the Democratic Party as you, uh, Republican Party as you want, and there's a ratchet to the, to the right effect. And Republicans know that they can keep being more and more extreme. And so I want you to explain to me what you predict to be the stopping point at which we're no longer be, we're no longer saying this new Republican is the worst that ever, has ever happened. This new Never. There is no stopping point. That is the answer. People always ask this. This is always the way it's framed, and it's such a bad faith way of framing it. How bad do Democrats have to be in order to not be the one to vote for? If they're better than the Republicans, you just always vote for them. It really is that simple. If you think that you're aiding and abetting in that case, like you're facilitating them always getting worse, whatever, trust me, them losing will not make them better. Like, think about it, okay? The Democrats had LBJ and Carter, and then they lost to Reagan and Bush Sr. And then who did they tout out? Clinton. The idea that electoral loss will encourage the Democrats to be less terrible is just not true. That is just not true. And that's not like, it, it, it's totally ahistorical. He promised to cancel all student debt for every graduate of an HBCU and $10,000 to $20,000 of, of student debt for people who earn less than $125,000 a year. Now, that might not matter to you. And I and I've defended, I defend. Notice how uh, slimy her rhetoric is too. That may not matter to you. Like, oh yeah, dude, Kyle Kalinske, definitely a person who's totally nonchalant and uncaring when it comes to expectations for economic populism from presidential candidates on the left. That's it. It's true. Historically, Kyle Kalinske has always taken a very moderate and laid back perspective on things like that, you know? The goal from her end is to frame herself as like the real leftist. Like, oh, maybe you're satisfied with him doing all of these incredibly good things nobody expected. But, you know, he didn't do this one thing. You framed the 2016 votes for Jill Stein and the reaction of the Democratic Party subsequently as evidence that a concerted movement effort to withhold one's votes has been proven ineffective. It is obviously the case, Crystal, that there was not a concerted effort in 2016 or any kind of structural movement to withhold one's vote for Hillary Clinton in favor of Jill Stein. It was just a bunch what? of us angry Bernie bros. A very small number, by the way. This is, this is a, a, a complete distraction. There were tons of people on the left who were saying that they weren't going to vote for Biden because the, the Bernie bro thing, the whole Bernie or bust. That's what the term Bernie or bust is. Whether or not there was a substantial number of them is immaterial to the question of whether or not they were right or wrong even if none of them actually committed to doing that. And of course, some did, you know, not a significant amount, I think, in the in the overall, uh, you know, um, in, in the overall electorate, but still. D then you can criticize the actions. Like, that's it. It's that simple. The way, because we all know sitting here that more Bernie Sanders voters in 2016 bent the knee and vote for, voted for Hillary Clinton than Hillary Clinton voters in 2008 bent the knee and voted for Brock. Also, yeah, it's such bullshit for her to say like, oh, dude, there was no like real effort to withhold the vote when she was one of the loudest people advocating for holding the vote. Like, yeah, she and her fucking pedo former fuck. Uh, what's his what's British man? British man. The British man. Virgil, Texas. Yeah, the British man who's called Texas or something. Is he even British? I remember him being British. Yeah, that, like, they were very, la like, they literally, that was their debate with Chomsky. He's not British. He looks British. That was their fucking debate with Chomsky. The whole debate with Chomsky. It was, was over, like, the Bernie or Bus thing. And now she's like, oh, uh, well, that wasn't, like, really a thing. Well, yeah, no thanks to you. You're being very dismissive, Kyle, about this 5% matching fund. First of all, I've said, like, two words when... in the past 10 minutes, okay? So I'm not being dismissive about <laughs> anything. Let I'm Kyle about talk. <laughs> okay. What's, what is it that you're chomp, uh, chomping at the bit? It's to the say, structural Kyle. barriers against running as a third party, as rigged as it is by the DNC against uh, outsider Democrats, which it definitely is. It's even more rigged against third parties, which is why they always get like 3% of the vote. Which is literally and why. And Bernie got 43% of the vote. Which is literally why people feel it is a structural advantage to get someone like Cornell West to 5% of the vote so they can get federal matching funds. To me, as he a gets voter. 40% as a Democrat. For me, as a voter in New York, I'm not interested in.
Also, when they talk about reaching 5% to get federal matching funds, even if by some miracle they manage to do that, it's worth remembering that that wouldn't do shit. The federal matching funds that would be provided towards, like, with, with all that money, they could go from 5% to 6%. Like, it would, it would not do anything, you know? They talk about that like that's them winning the presidency, and it's not. They would, they would like, for a brief bit, be like, oh, wow, okay, here's like a couple, like, few tens of millions or whatever, which is not even remotely enough. I think for one, getting federal matching funds for third party candidates, since I believe third parties are going to be a much better vehicle to actual man meaningful change in this country than the Democratic uh... Party, is infinitely uh, more significant a goal. But then, third parties haven't gotten a single electoral vote in and it's like years and rounds and rounds and rounds. No, but it's circle. true because, I mean, look at Ross Perot had all the money in the world. It didn't matter. He didn't get one electoral vote. He didn't vote. get one electoral vote. Do you vote. agree that's that ranked choice voting needs to come first? That, that's the important question. Do you agree that if, if that... we get ranked choice voting, then yes, overnight third party. I want it to be known how cathartic it is for me, somebody who's been like running on these lines for a while, to listen to it be advocated for by Crystal and Kyle. It's so fucking gratifying from my end of things to hear the advocacy like this. It's so good. It feels so good. I hate this third party brain rot. Okay, yeah, I maybe... <sighs> I can't know this for sure, but I think a lot of people get suckered into this, and a lot of those people have good intentions, but I really do think that a lot of the hoorah, Cornell West, whatever, um, types, I really do think they're knowing grifters. I think that a lot of them understand that third parties can't actually do anything, and the reason they advocate for them is because this way they never have to be accountable for anything. Because Cornell West will never win and never do anything, and they know it, they can hold him up as the permanent, like, unreachable um, end state of, pol like, you know, like, they, like a god you can worship. Oh, well, you're never going to get that point. So as long as we never reach a point where we have to be held to account for our inability to govern, then it's fine, you know? We're never actually held accountable. And it just goes on and on and on. What would they do if by some miracle he actually won? I, I, honestly, be one of the biggest embarrassments in American political history. Like, incredibly, like, unimaginably ineffectual governance like we're, we're talking like th like everything jimmy carter fucked up on times five thousand. you know but it's not going to happen it'll never happen it can't happen and they know it because advocating for things that actually can happen means that if they do happen you're accountable for it it means that you have responsibility over the way the messaging is delivered and the outcomes but as long as you're on pie in the sky bullshit then you don't you don't have to do any of that yeah, dog that caught the car. Yeah. But the question is, what is actually going to move the ball I, I'm, forward? I'm confused the way and I just don't Matt. because I don't see because policy is all that matters. Because I don't see how Cornell West. Drowned Joy Gray is like, I'm confused by why you keep asking me how to actually improve things rather than just complain. <laughs> why do you keep? I'm I'm curious. I'm I'm trying to LARP here, and you keep talking about policy and ways to make things better for the working class, and I don't I, I don't understand why why are you doing that over and over. Can you admit that? Can you acknowledge you that? That, think... that it's until we get rank choice voting, no third party has any chance in hell. Who you agree you with that, right? Who do you think has been doing most of the rank choice? That? Who do you think? Can I'm I... going to answer it. <laughs> it's a simple I'm question. I'm going to answer it in my own time and my own words, Kyle, respectfully. <laughs> it's a simple one. <laughs> the rank choice uh, voting thing, if we get rank choice say, voting. I, I go around, I do a lot of podcasts, and I don't know what's going on right now. It might be the phase of the moon. We had the double moon last month. But I'm getting a little frustrated. This is okay. This is this is classic Brianna Joy Gray, where she uh, acts like a retard for 30 minutes, doesn't address anything that's said to her, and then she's like, "Um, you're all being really hostile to me right now, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that at personally, in my opinion. I don't know if I like that." And she gets really fucking smug. This is so on brand for her. It's complete. Like, oh, she does this every fucking time. But then he gets in office and he does all these things which shock me. He massively reduced the drone war by over 90%. He, mm -hmm. like I said, pulled out of Afghanistan. The Supreme Court overturned the EPA's ability to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. And the Democrats slipped into the IRA a provision that redefines carbon as a pollutant, which then allows the EPA to start protecting the environment again. If we didn't get that, and yes, that was brought to us by Democrats, we would be beyond fucked on the issue of climate change. We still are, but we'd be even more fucked if the EPA couldn't do basic EPA stuff. Mm -hmm. We have project labor agreements for hundreds of thousands of construction workers. That came to us from Biden. $15 minimum wage for federal contractors and employees. That's from Biden. Gun reform with red flag laws and closing the boyfriend loophole. Those are definitely good things. Katanji Brown Jackson on the court. Get ready for Brianna Joy Gray's reaction. Oh, dude. Okay, guys, we're putting the bets down now. Is she going to be the maddest any human has ever been? Or is she going to ignore basically everything that was said and focus on one tiny niche point? Or is she going to ask a stupid rhetorical question like, well, then how do you expect us to get third parties? Ignore? We're voting on ignore? Okay. 
So when I talk about Biden the way I do is because none of these things were on the menu and we got them. So now when I look at the fact it's either going to be Trump or Biden, a st standard generic Republican or standard generic Democrat, the way I feel now versus the way I felt in the past is like, oh, this is definitely way better. If you ask me in 2019 or 2020, I'd be like, I don't know, man, flip a coin. 52% maybe a Democrat's a little bit better than a Republican. Now I'm looking at it like it's not even close. One blows the other out of the water. And all I care about is the policy. And when we have all these uh, policies, I mean, we have a 15% corporate minimum tax rate now. That is not something we had previously. You'd have corporations paying nothing in, in taxes or they'd even get a negative tax rate, which is a subsidy effectively from the taxpayers. These things are not nothing. We have a 1% tax on stock buybacks. They're cracking down on wealthy tax sheets. Like all these things are very good. They're objectively good. So do you agree that Biden is better than what we expected on the left? Maybe you've already set your expectations on the ground and it seems like he's surpassed your expectations. Not answering. He has not surpassed mine. I don't, I don't know what you want me to not answering. Yeah. Okay. So what she's doing here very dishonestly is she is conflating expectations with hopes. The, because if she genuinely expected Biden to do all those good things, then she would be like a fucking resist lib. But she's she's conflating those two things. She's she's ignoring it deliberate. It's deliberate dishonesty. It's not confusion. She knows that she's yeah. So ignoring was the answer. You were all correct. To say but he's not better that. than what you thought? No, That's he's honest not question. better he... than what I thought he was. Really? Let me, no. Let me really? Be better than psychotic. Than sure. Actually well, psychotic. I expected him to... Well, I didn't really expect him to fulfill his campaign pro promises, but I'm not going to... See? See? Liar! She's a fucking liar! She gets called out on the fact that she's conflating expectation with hope, and then she's like, oh, well, no, no, actually, he's worse than I expected. And then she's like, completely contradictory. Well, I didn't expect him to do anything, actually. She doesn't believe in anything. She lies for her own personal benefit. Like, that's it, you know? T complete lie. And, and like, that right there should be enough to discredit anything. She, just in, a, in the same sentence right there. It's just nothing. She doesn't believe shit. She doesn't believe anything. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm here for, for Crystal and Kyle kicking ass, because they definitely are, you know? really well and i can i can really hear the the passion with which kyle is speaking on this too his frustration that he has to deal with shit like this i'm really glad that he had this conversation with her too because i know there are people in kyle's audience who have this tendency and it's you know they they need to be shaken to reality because it's 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 really dumb it's really really dumb i guess my, my question for you is because you were sort of like all right let's acknowledge Sure. Let's say Biden's 10 times better than Trump. Like how much better would he have to be before you're like, OK, it's that's not just question. it's not just lesser evil. It's not just vote blue no matter that's who. A, it's that's actually that's worth question. voting for this person. He would have had to have done everything that he could have done. So no. So no politician would ever be. So could have done, in my opinion. <laughs> even in comparison. Okay, what, what kind of statement is that? I just not, think. Wait a minute. I'm not saying he could have. I'm not taking me. a shot at you. I'm just saying I don't think policy. I, I even somebody like Bernie who's principled. I don't think he I, even delivers on everything. He has to fulfill miracles. I'm not saying he has to accomplish everything that he says he wants to do. I'm saying he has to have done everything he could, everything have, done. He could have done. A completely nebulous uh, standard that could be moved at any point with like no way of tracking it. Again, she she can't say anything specific like if he did these things, because then again, she would be held accountable to any kind of real position. It just has to be like a general vibe that she can pull away from. Obama's gay. Did you know that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I knew that. Oh, shit. It ends there. That was fucking abrupt. At least we got to learn that Obama is gay. Credit where credit's due. Kyle and Crystal knocked that shit out of the park. Brianna Joy Gray really is like a disgusting piece of shit, huh? Like genuinely like a fucking worthless person. Don't you think? Really is incredible. Do you think Crystal is realizing that her behavior might actually like backfire and have negative consequences? I've said, again, I've said a lot of negative stuff about Crystal in the past. Um, I've also said that I maybe she's a grifter or whatever. Um, I, I shouldn't make statements like that unless it's really fucking obvious like with Brianna Joy Gray. Because it's not something that I can like literally prove, and it's usually pretty immaterial. Um, I don't think that Crystal's behavior here is even remotely compatible with the argument that she is a grifter. Like, uh, regardless of like broader, just because so, sometimes I see the Breaking Point show and the shit she says just defies belief, you know. But whatever like the broader perspective might end up being she kicked ass here and you know you should always be willing to to give credit when it's due bjg is quite manipulative i i agree or i admit Fosh, she had me fooled about this earlier today brianna joy gray is really good at shifting into the like whiny you know why are people being mean to me uwu bullshit when she feels threatened or when she doesn't have a good argument to make she does that quite a lot
just remember, like, it goes beyond grifting. Like, Brianna Joy Gray would happily see all of you dead. If you are a person who would be threatened by a Trump administration, and you all are, every single person watching this is, like, she does not care. She has the power and the sway to make a positive difference, and she doesn't because she knows that her audience capture, uh, it, like, would, it, would, it would not be to her benefit to be a good person. When BJG dropped into that teacher voice, I felt irrationally mad, like, so angry. Yeah, because it's, it's, like, identifiably, like, manipulator shit. Yeah.